The gastrointestinal tract is a muscular tube that begins at the mouth or the oral cavity and ends at the anus. Accessory organs include the teeth, tongue, gallbladder, and digestive glands. Click the mouth to reveal its functions. Food enters the GI tract at the mouth. Mechanical action of the teeth and tongue break food apart and mix it with saliva. A chewed portion of food, called a bolus, is separated and swallowed. Click the enlarged mouth to observe its unique anatomical features. The epithelium lining the mouth and pharynx is stratified squamous. It provides protection against abrasion in high temperatures. The epithelium covering the hard palate and dorsal surface of the tongue is keratinized. Click the esophagus to reveal its functions. The esophagus has no digestive or absorptive functions. It is simply a conduit that conveys food from the pharynx to the stomach. The esophagus passes through the diaphragm at the esophageal hiatus. Click the enlarged esophagus to observe its unique anatomical features. The upper third of the esophagus is striated muscle. The middle third is a mixture of striated and smooth muscle, and the lower third is smooth muscle. Like the mouth and pharynx, the lining is stratified squamous epithelium. Click the stomach to reveal its functions. The stomach expands to store ingested food. Its movements pulverize lumps and mix stomach secretions with the food. Acidic gastric juice digests cells, tissues, and some macromolecules. Partially digested food is called chyme. Click the enlarged stomach to observe its unique anatomical features. The stomach has four regions, the cardia, fundus, body, and pyloric region. The antrum is the largest part of the pyloric region, and the pylorus is the constricted terminal portion. Click the external surface of the stomach to see the interior structures. The empty stomach is flat, with a volume of about 50 milliliters. Its interior is thrown into folds called rugi. The rugi flatten out as the fundus and body distend to accommodate a meal. The stomach can hold about one liter of food with little change in internal pressure. Pressure rises as the stomach distends further to accommodate up to four liters of food. Click the stomach to see its muscular wall. In addition to the circular and longitudinal muscle layers of the GI tract, the stomach has an inner oblique layer. Muscles are thin in the fundus and body and produce only weak contractions. Gastric muscles increase in thickness in the pyloric region. Strong contractions in the pyloric region are important for mixing ingested food with gastric juice and emptying chyme into the small intestine. Click the small intestine to reveal its functions. Most digestion and absorption occur in the small intestine. The stomach delivers chyme to the small intestine in little squirts. The rate of delivery matches the processing capacity of the intestine. Juices in the small intestine neutralize the acidic chyme, restore normal osmolarity, and continue digestion of macromolecules. Breakdown products of macromolecules are absorbed across the intestinal epithelium into blood or lymph. Click the small intestine to observe its unique anatomical features. The small intestine has three regions, duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. The duodenum is just 8 to 11 inches long. The total length of jejunum and ileum is 8 to 13 feet, the jejunum slightly shorter than the ileum. Click the external surface of the small intestine to see the interior structures. The interior of the small intestine contains many permanent circular folds called plaque circularis. The duodenum has few folds. Its function is to neutralize chyme and render it isosmotic. The number of folds is greatest in the jejunum where most absorption takes place. Plaque circularis increase the absorptive surface area of this organ. 
Click the Ply key to study additional features that increase surface area. The Ply key are covered with finger-like projections of the mucosa called villi, which also increase the absorptive surface area. Villi are longest in the jejunum and shortest in the terminal ilium. Click the villi. The columnar epithelial cells of the small intestine have many tiny projections on their luminal surface called microvilli that further increase the absorptive surface area. The surface is called a brush border because it resembles the bristles of a hairbrush. Click the villus to learn about immune functions of the small intestine. The GI tract provides an entryway into the body for pathogens as well as for food and drink. Cells throughout the upper GI tract secrete antimicrobial agents and gastric acid renders chyme nearly sterile. Some intestinal villus cells secrete both antibacterial enzymes and immunoglobulins. In the distal ileum, there are lymphoid nodules in the connective tissue beneath the epithelium. Normal bacteria from the large intestine may enter the small intestine. Lymphocytes in the nodules prevent these bacteria from entering the bloodstream. Click the villus to begin study of the large intestine. The small intestine delivers chyme to the large intestine. Water and salts are absorbed from the chyme as it progresses through the large intestine. Bacteria normally present produce some vitamins that are also absorbed. Click the large intestine to observe its unique anatomical features. The large intestine has subdivisions including the cecum, appendix, colon, including the ascending, transverse, descending, and sigmoid colon, rectum, and anal canal. The outer longitudinal layer of the muscular wall is reduced to three bands called tinea coli. Contractions of the inner circular layer of muscle form the sac-like impermanent haustra. Click the anal canal to study its histological features. In the distal anal canal, the simple columnar epithelium that began in the stomach changes to stratified squamous. It protects underlying tissues from abrasion. The anus is the outlet of the GI tract. The feces eliminated from the GI tract are primarily indigestible food combined with bacteria, inorganic material, and sloughed-off epithelial cells.